don't know. Maybe secret trajectory, unfortunately, is just to like make it to the top 12 and there's like. It might be. We'll have to see as uh, Mineski. They certainly have. Uh, well, I'm sure they were feeling good about things with the last pick, Alchemist, but that Meepo has got to be a cause for concern. What's really funny is like most times in this tournament, you have not been able to last pick Alchemist. Like, yeah. This is not a uh, 22 pick that you normally see. And it's just funny to see like we've trump carded you and Secret was like, no. Do you think Mineski was sitting there going like, is this is this real? Is this a trap? You know what it's like? It's like, it's too good to be true. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. looking around and they're saying like, that's free money? You want us to move on in the tournament? <laughs> it's like the stage could explode or something if we pick up this alchemist? Like, what, what, what's happening here? No, this has got to be a booby trap. And they, you know, they're fine. They're happy about it. Come on. All right. Oh, this is good. So the mid one, Meepo. And we're going to see Secret immediately smoke up and trying to get advantageous laning set up. What, what are our lanes that we want to see from Secret? What are they looking for? Uh, I think they probably want to... Okay, it looks like Secret anyways is going to, for the time being, aggro for the Tidehunter. I could very well see Zai just go for the Gosh level 1, just so that they can set up the first blood. What they're trying to do here, Cap, is secure bounty runes. But KP is going to get real suspicious once he realizes that nobody's in this top lane. And this should alert Mineski, don't battle over this bottom rune. Yeah. This is death right here for you guys. That's why Ragey Potato puts himself a little bit farther away from the bounty rune, tries to scout out, and they see Zai running forward, just trying to establish that dominance. He's going to go for the Gush level 1, as you said. Yapsor is going to be nailed by the arrow. Nico Baby doesn't feel good about this fight, though. He's going to stun up Puppy instead, and Ninja Boogie. Mineski chose to take this fight, and they choose to watch Ninja Boogie die. Fade away first blood, the Yavzor. And didn't I just say, don't take this fight, you're not gonna win this fight. And look at Raging Potato, he's trying really hard to get the bounty room, but he gets caught and the telekinesis now body blocked as well. He went for the level one arrow, that's two. Okay, uh, obviously I'm not in the game, but at the same time, I feel like once KP scouted at that top area, I feel like that should have been like a clear cut, okay, we're, we're out of this. There's yep. no longer a fight that's happening here. Odd situation, but Mineski, I guess, feeling pressured because they have an alchemist to get that extra bounty rune. The weird part was is they were guaranteed two at top. KP got both of those. They do swap the lanes up. He's going to be laned against Nisha, trying to give uh, Nico Baby a more favorable setup. No way. You have to be careful in those like tri lane situations. Uh, I mean, Tide Gush level one is actually such a sick spell. 110 damage, four armor reduction, when nobody had armor at that point. This is something that the Chinese do a lot too. Uh, you know, when they go for the, like, the dual aggro off lanes with Tidehunter, they used to do it yeah. a lot when Monkey King was a thing, if you recall. Yeah. They would bring like plus two heroes, you just get gosh level one, Monkey King thinks he can just trade hits with you, and it's a free kill. Yeah, so many Monkey Kings back then fell into the trap of thinking their Jingu allowed them to be able to fight anybody, but so much minus armor allows you to be able to win a lot of these man fights range of potato just trying to find what farm he can off of the jungle but is sharing that experience with yapsor currently he's just chasing him around the map with his boots first and mid matchup it looks like things are going just fine for the alchemist which uh is anticipated the weird thing about both these heroes is they play in a very similar way like, they both want to just hit jungle creeps they don't really care too much about how the laning phase goes they'll recover at other parts of the game uh, which is why, laning phase-wise, it's not really worth watching either of these heroes. It's much more... I think much more of this game will be determined by how the side lanes go. Yeah. Like, particularly this bottom lane. And we see this Meepo last pick. We think of it as a counter, but not because of the laning phase, right? But because of the way BSJ stated it, that you're going to be able to both farm and invade the jungle against this uh, alchemist with a Meepo. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those heroes that threatens all the lanes at once, which is so important. It has the ability to punish him in team fights at all times, despite what uh, Alchemist gets. The upside for Alk, though, is his item build is going to be very good against the Meepo. As we see this mini fight going on, Raging Potato still has the arrow and the leap. That's why Yapsor, being a little bit more careful, isn't level 2 himself yet. Raging Potato trying to line up the arrow right now, and Yapsor going to dodge it. Telekinesis, toss back Raging Potato, and he will be fine. It's going to be all of his leap charges gone. 
does leave are tied versus Omni Knight in a 1v1, which I'm thinking Omni Knight should eventually win that because of the purification nuke, but we'll have to keep our eye on it. The uh, the one that's probably going to be battling a lot is that top lane with Wraith King and Witch Doctor, but trying to match into a Visage. They visage get... tri lanes are always just really, really strong. Yeah. Like, you never feel bad about playing a Visage tri lane. This is a hero that we haven't really seen often, and it's really interesting because you don't normally see Nisha play these types of heroes. Uh, when Secret has had success at this tournament, it's been when he plays more of a hard, hard carry. That's why I feel like mid one's also been struggling, just because they've been putting him in a little bit more of a sacrificial role mm -hmm. as of late. This time around, I feel like this is a good confidence booster game for him. You saw at the end of the EG series last night where they rubbed his head, they were trying to tell him like, probably like, shake it off, yeah. you're still a superstar. This is one of those nice statement games. Do you think that this is why Secret pulled out the pocket strat in a way, right? Is just to be able to get that fast win against Mineski, build up some confidence, which has seemed to be quite the theme here at the International. Everybody's been talking about how important it is to be able to have confidence, not be having nerves when it comes to playing on the main stage. And a young player like Nisha certainly could suffer from it. I feel like Nisha has actually done quite admirably here. His top lane is going to be able to follow that up. And Nisha is in big time trouble. No levels to the Gravekeeper's cloak, which means no armor with which to work on. Ninja Boogie is going to be chased away by the two supports of Secret, but the damage is already done. The second, uh, first kill, rather, for Mineski. This is going to give them a slightly early gold lead. Of course, things are a little bit offset considering there is a Meepo and an Alk in the game. That's why I don't know if like the gold lead is deceptive. Like, yeah, maybe they're both kind of the same in that way. Puppy's gonna be found out just a little bit off base, but Nico Baby is gonna be threatened here. And if they trade out carry for support, it's well worth it for secret. They need a few more shots, and there it goes. Nisha with the double rounds of soul assumption is able to get the kill, pulling every bit of his mana. But as he said, does manage to get the core for support trade off. Now mid one's gonna rotate over with one of his meepos securing. The bounty runes, that is, I guess, something we didn't actually talk about. The movement around the map from a Meepo and being able to pressure the side lanes also leads into better bounty control, which is crucial against an Alchemist. Secret do pick up three to one. Bottom lane just feels like we're going to get a trade of farm. Uh, it's always awkward when two heroes are pretty evenly matched, well, but that might change right now if Zai going to get gone on here. Ninja Boogie is here with the Maledict too, one of the best ways to deal with the Tide Hunter. Quickly cancels his TP in favor of an anchor smash, seeing Ninja Boogie, but there's just no hope, no escape for Zai. That's actually going to hurt him quite a bit. The fact that he had to use his TP too. Yeah, he's going to have to do that uh, walk of shame back to the lane. And where is he going to go? Because now it seems like Mineski had the level six on Omni Knight. He's got those high levels of purification. Uh, they feel comfortable with him aiming against the Visage, especially with this kind of level advantage. Yeah, please keep in mind too that Visage is not one of those ultra late game threats. Like this is he definitely a hero that is meant to end the game uh, and meant to end it at a reasonable time. Yeah. So this puts Secret in sort of a weird timing window, which you don't really expect from them. The two levels of Heavenly Grace, it's certainly a value game for it. Whether it's the uh, Grave Chill that's going to be coming out or slowing down or taking away some of the slows or stuns coming out from the Crystal Maiden. So KP should have a relatively free lane here, but he always has to be careful of that Meepo rotation. And mid one is well placed right now in the jungle to do just that. Nico Baby closing in on level six. They're gonna try and pressure Zai right now, but from a bit of a distance, just poking at him with the Maledict, nothing major. While top lane, they're gonna go on KP. But again, both off laners seem to be indestructible right now. Yeah, let me say, whenever Omni has a good start, it's so hard to kill him in the laning phase. All this guy really needs is levels. He's got high base HP, good armor. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just the fact that you have to get rid of his base HP pool. You have to assume that he's gonna get at least one uh, purification off, so and his Heavenly Grace, it actually makes his effective HP closer to like 1600, 1700 HP. And that's not even including Magic Stick, which is such a value item on him, because it just continues to bump up your effective health. 
Ninja Boogie, you can see, trying to keep his vision around that mid lane. They're gonna try and actually go for mid one right now, but without unstable concoction, they don't really have a great way to control up mid one. He does drop really well, low the Maledict, and that last oh, he's gone. Gone. does it. He could not TP back to the base fast enough. Cap, that was three levels of Maledict. That is a really high level, but understandable against like somebody like a Tidehunter. These tanky heroes. I'm very surprised, though, that he's level five already. I think that's the bigger surprise. Yeah. I mean, that Ninja Boogie, the five position Witch Doctor, uh, is already having this much impact. He has already been involved in four kills. All four of his team kills, in fact. It's funny that uh, that slip up from Midwan, he very clearly thought he was going to be okay. Otherwise, he just would have uh, TP'd right away. Yeah, I think he realized it a second too late. Because yeah. you don't expect a level five Witch Doctor, five position at seven minutes. That's not really something that happens very often. So I think Midwan was just caught out of surprise. Oh, they're trying to force out the lead from Rage and Potato, and that's where Zai is going to be able to clean up. Nice and fast. What a cute play. Bates him in, leaping down on the cliff. A gush and anchor smash rapidly finishes them off, even though he had leap charges. The play just came too fast. Elkinesis toss back. A gush being used, but Moon does have chemical rage. Secret instantly known. That's no longer a target they can threaten. My bet, my favorite part about Secret, by the way, is Z Zai just uh, walks by mid, anchor smashes, so that Yapsor can get the last hit. The uh, blurry line between three and four position. Mid one, pretty in trouble here. The Maldives, he's gonna take out this he's gonna, Evo. He's, he's gonna on. try and keep away, but he's gone. There is way too much damage. He buys a raindrop just to try and survive, oh, he's gonna but it's that still not enough. That was so much damage that they pumped out onto him. Yeah. It was like 800 instantly. And I Ninja Boogie, he's really putting on a show right now. Level seven, putting up deep wards for his team. Like he's doing all the right things right now. He's putting pressure on the map. He's the one rotating to get kills. And Ninja Boogie has been integral to Mineski's success, has played a leadership role, a loud voice in the booth, and guiding Mineski. And this has opened up so much space for Moon. If you look at his Radiance timing, we always talk about uh, what's a good timing. Anything below 12 minutes is usually ideal. His side is before. dead. Here, the Maledict is going to do so much damage. He picks up the phase boots on his way through the side shop. And the Maledict does finish him off, but Ninja Boogie spots him. And Ray Fire Blast from Nico Baby will get that kill. KP trying to pick up the battle rune. He and does he get it. does. Very important here. And now he's actually going to try and kill Puppy. Look at this. With the Heavenly Grace. Okay, that's now gone. So that slow is going to last a while. He does have stick charges. Another round of Heavenly Grace. A purification coming up in one second. He's got to finish off Puppy. And will he make it away too? He doesn't quite have the mana for a TP out with the birds chasing him They're as not well. Gonna it's going to be different. But uh, with a soul ring and all this reach, and they just can't chase this on the night down. Oh, net after net for Rachy Potato. Not held long enough. Hey, you leap away. Uh, you called it David versus Goliath, but Mineski do not look out of place whatsoever right now on this main stage. They're bringing the fight to Team Secret. I feel like Ninja Boogie is outplaying them. This guy is very far for support at this point. He doesn't even need the tome. Yeah. Like normally you have some level four witch doctor that didn't have the best laning phase. He has a point of heal. He's trying to buff up his safe laner. None of that is happening in this game. It's just all offense three zero four. And you saw top the issue with going on a farm to Omni Knight. Yeah. You're just not going to do it. Uh, the amount of HP that this guy has. They just don't have, like, do the greatest burst either. No, this really is a sick him. Omni game. If yeah. you look at uh, Secret's lineup, what you really need to deal with an Omni is burst. You the need the ability smoke. to get in, just blow him up. Look at this. Rage of Potato is sitting on the high ground just perfectly. They do manage to get a scan on him, so they're going to run around, but Mineski simultaneously got a scan on the Secret. Now, Nico Baby's going to be spotted here. He does have stick charges. That'll be enough for the reincarnation, so it should be fine. If anything, he's going to turn around and rig fire blast with the air landing onto Puppy as well. A smoke leading to a death for Team Secret. It seems the paralyzing cast still not enough. One more shot from the Marana. Is it going to do it? But Ninja very Boogie. rapidly changing targets there from Ninja Boogie. Smart play by him. He's going to die to mid one for sure. And that's going to be dominating streak. That is actually quite concerning, giving that to mid one. All that uh, cold and experience. Look at Nisha, though. Bowling by KP. He just doesn't slow down. Pops that in the grace on himself. That's four levels. That's going to last a long time. Has a ton of regen to it. One. Do they need no, the rotation? Is anybody gonna help them out? They're gonna bring more heroes to the secret. They're gonna blow the ravage. They have puppy TP in as well. They use everything they have to bring down the EI finalists in KP.
But during this time, Moon has just been farming away, and that gank was really expensive. Uh, if you notice, they dropped one ward and two sentries, all of it is gone. That was 300 gold that they laid out. Their observer ward instantly got rewarded. That was not the typical one for one trade, and that's why the gold lead didn't change whatsoever. Eight to six. 4,000 network feed for the Alchemist lineup. But how accepted that is with Amiibo, we're yet to see, or else yet to see this Alchemist make his first food. But it's happening now with that smoke up heading into the enemy jungle. Puppy is there. The captain trying to function as a smoke breaker right now. It's actually going for ward. They know where he is. They know where Puppy is. They don't care about Puppy. They want to be able to. They found him. Thanks to that D4 they had, they're going to be able to get the paralyzed catch with Mouse in the arrow to be able to finish him off. Now, Ninja Boogie tossed into the Alchemist with the freezing field. Look pretty tanky, but here comes the first. Be able to lock him down. The stolen death word is able to finish off at least one of these supports. Moon's quite tanky, especially with the KP behind him. Secret can no longer run. If anything, maybe Nico, baby, they can pressure that tier one mid tower. And that's such a smooth move. They know that they can't split up the jungle that much. So they're waiting for the Meepo calm. They're being patient. They let. The Crystal Maiden walk by them, and more importantly, they also saw the ward get placed down. Yeah. That, it's again, an ideal situation for Vineski. They see the ward get placed down, they get the Meepo. All it really costs them is the five position Witch Doctor, who has been so valued at its position. Just With the pure amount of damage that he's putting out so far. Yeah. Whether it's the warding game or it's the rotations, Vineski seem to be one move ahead of Team Secret. Yeah, Secret need to wake up right now. Yeah. This is... I, I think a lot of people, myself included, and you, thought this was going to be a relatively free matchup for Team Secret. And it is not looking like that at all. And Ninja Boogie, he goes for that suicidal play to catch the uh, warp that they spotted out earlier, but does die in the process. This should alert. And it does, in fact, uh, alert Secret to the fact that they had the ward, obviously, off of the gank. But the bigger thing is they need to protect this mid tower cap. Yeah. The, uh, they're doing a good job with KP, just like, because he's so strong, he can plant himself in the mid lane and just chip away at that tower every once in a while, get a hit or two in. The main force of Maneski is the top lane, where they're going to take that safe lane tower. Trying to mirror secret right now, we're doing the same at bottom. And this is definitely concerning, because mid one Meepo still needs some time to come online, and this is going to maybe run into a window where the Alchemist gets his Radiance plus one item and starts dominating. Yeah, maybe not. As Zai is coming in, Moon doesn't quite have the ultimate yet. They are going to open up on him. They, they do, do have the up, uh, the Marauder nearby, but with no chemical rage, no regen for Moon, he's just going to get popped. It's very nice secret, move. Shutting down the Alchemist. They needed something like that. Yeah, I really like that play by them. They rotated multiple cores. They saw the Alk TP and they knew it was going to be worth it. They won't continue to play in that bottom area anyways. Uh, that's why they cleared out the vision. But Mineski still comfortably ahead, 5k, of course, it is an Alchemist game, but uh, conversely, you have a Meepo on your team. Yep. This hero should also be artificially ahead, but they've done such a good job of controlling mid one. Mineski can also have another crazy farmer, uh, Wraith King, who's been one of the heroes of the tournament, for sure, just because, unlike Alchemist, he hasn't actually been banned as often, especially not in the first three. Yeah, he's got his own flash farm mechanic. Yep. With the... Skeleton Brothers. With the boys. The boys come out. The Vlad's complete for Zai. Doesn't have Ravage, but feels he's tanky enough that he could sit and challenge KP Zombie Knight in the mid lane, making sure he doesn't get any more damage on that mid tower. As you said, they need to protect that. Look at that win probability. Heavily favoring Maneski right now. And a smooth 72% now. Moon's going to show up with the Heavenly Grace helping him out. That's added damage as well, where he can swing onto the tower, or in this case, swing on his eye. Kraken Shell quickly cleanses off that stun and is going to be able to find no way to safety here with no Ravage. Team Secret, they may have fainted like they wanted to be able to fight, but they're going to back up knowing that Maneski is much stronger than them and will lose that mid tower. There goes that map control. Now Puppy's going to be found as well. Off the Moonlight Shadow into the Rayfire Fire Blast. Unstable Concoction as well available. They just burst down the captain of Team Secret. And and managed to get the control of the birds in time. Nico, baby, he's going in deep here. And Secret think this is a little bit too deep. They're going to try and turn things around. But then you have the Omni Knight to be able to help out this Wraith King. Give him a few heals. Give him the Heavenly Grace. And bam, there goes Midwatch. Just like that, he's just going to be surrounded by so many Secret heroes as well. They're diving into Tier 3s. They don't care who Secret is. They don't care they're top of the DPC system. They're going to dive these Tier 3s and punish Secret for trying to dare to fight Menace.
Vineski and their alchemist. I'm so surprised that secret decided to go for the fight. They don't have vision around that area. They just get assaulted. Once they lose uh, Puppy, it's a four on five. And even though you are by your tier two tower, Mineski have such good heroes at diving. The Omni Knight allows them to reset. The Wraith King ulti allows them to play aggressively. And no hero can challenge the Alk at this point in the game. Look at that. Moon handing out some serious damage. Just the length of that fight, whether through the acid sprays, the unstable concoction, or even the radiance, really proving that this Meepo cannot it's, it's not online it's not ready to fight Maneski. Yeah. if your team's secret we're always going to give you the benefit of the doubt they always have this aura that they can turn games around we saw it in the game against alliance where they came back from mega creeps but they need to start waking up right now cap get that alarm bell going they do have an arrow slides right past ball of secret they're going to try and take this mid tower with the birds with mid one joining them as well the crimson guard as well as the glyph being used here but uh, the rotations are just not there for Mineski. They are conceding this tower. Rage of Potato once again trying to go for a deny, but just half a beat too late. Yeah, they know this time around the fight comes with the Ravage. They don't have the Wraith King ulti or the Omni Knight ult. That's a good move by them to reset things. And for Secret, I really like this move. Ooh. They know that they have the cooldown advantage. Yeah. And they're taking advantage of that. They need to make plays like this to try to get themselves back into this game. This is where it starts. But Mineski. They may choose to take the fight, even if they don't have the cooldowns. They're going to show up now. They do have the arrow. Unstable concoction ready to go. They're trying to focus down KP, but there goes that Ravage. Control him up. KP almost dead. Gets off the purification. That last nuke from the Vistage wasn't good enough for Rubik. Seal purification, but doesn't save mid one in time. The Frantic Field is out. They're trying to finish off Puppy. Nico, baby, wisely tied five seconds away from the reincarnation, but it's still Moon with the BKB, with the Radiance, with the buybacks coming out from Secret. He's a little bit timid going into the high ground. He's, he's going to try and chase down Psy, maybe finish off Puppy. The Unstable concoction, though. The they hit them. The Radiance burns out Puppy, yes, but now with a stun on himself, never mind. KP is here. They have that Heavenly Grace, and it does so much for this Alchemist. KP, though, doesn't protect himself so well. Now he's just going to die in the niche of the Moonlight Shadow, almost saving him, but still in vision. And just the high ground hits as well from Secret will finish him off with buybacks. Now Secret should be able to secure Roshan and maybe get the kill on Rage Potato as well as he tried to run through vision. Laid out by Secret in the river. Finally, Secret gets themselves the W that they desperately needed to get some control of this losing game. Yeah, they committed three buybacks for that. They're not going home without that Roshan. Bounty runes at bottom side. The stolen Moonlight Shadow allows him to just get in, get out, grab it for free. Ninja Boogie gonna battle Zai over this rune. And mid one pressuring top lane, he does have this Aegis, and they need to do a lot with it. Oh, this is no. where you get as much map control as you possibly can. Because hey. the next fight in, you won't be so lucky. Mineski will have all those key ultimates up. And I think in a pure 5 on 5 fight, you're not winning. Yeah, we're going to see this again. Look at that. Okay, they ignored barely able to walk away. Just a huge freezing field that does manage to finish off Nico Baby. Look at him. He was just five seconds away from the reincarnation. That had to hurt. Because yeah. if he actually has a second life, they chase down Puppy, they chase down Zai, and maybe they're the ones who control the Roshan pit instead. I actually think Moon got a little bit too ahead of himself. Mm. Part of it is you see a CM at like 100 HP and you're just like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you could say Nico Baby so close. Yet, secret. And now been able to knock down that net worth advantage that was once sitting at about 10K down to round seven. Yeah, this is always the uh, scariest part about playing in secret because you know that at any time they can make these com kind of comebacks because I mean, for the large part of the season, they were the best team in the world. And they've got one of those great comeback mechanisms, one of those great high ground defenders too, in Zai's Tidehunter with the Ravage. They're currently smoked up, looking for a play right now while Ravage is just about to come off cooldown. They're gonna go for Nisha here in the bottom lane, but this is where the rotation's gonna come from Secret, but they may not be here in time as Nisha is just gonna get beaten to a pulp. They're gonna try and deal with his familiars as well, but that's where Secret shows up. They're gonna be able to catch the back line first. Rage of Potato falls down, right up in. Three man Ravage with the Nisha burst out, dropping onto three of them with the Instairs as well. Here comes the Eagle, the unstable Kakashi goes out, they just finish off Mineski. They thought they had the free kill. Moon's gonna come back in though. Another round on the table, Concoction does manage to nail the Meepo. Can he focus it down in time? Mid one, needs to be able to get this Meepo out of here. He's trying to chase away from Moon. Mung spots him, does manage to get the unstable Concoction, and no, he doesn't finish off. Finally, he turns back around, takes away that Aegis, but at what cost? Mineski, and now just Moon on up to have his himself. He does have managed to get off the unstable Concoction for a moment. Yeah, so he's gonna burn out, but not before he gets off the Raid Fire Blast to make sure the Galvis dies. Five-man team wipe and the buyback from Ninja Boogie. That'll be six. 
secret. They needed to do a lot with this Aegis, and they are recovering in this game. They're gonna grab this tier two tower up the top. Top lane is gonna get pushed out. They're gonna get more and more out of the map. And Maneski, they played such a clean game up until this point, going in one by one, trying to take that fight. Not even by their shrine. Yep. They walk onto the low ground where they don't have vision. It just feels like they're getting a little bit too ahead of themselves. And his secrets, credit, that was a well-laid trap, right? The the power of Nisha's hero is not necessarily in his hero, but in his familiars. And him being able to be the bait for them, he's awfully tanky. And even if they finish him off, there's still the familiars to help them win the fight. That kind of secret maneuver is why they're so respected. Why? They are a team to be feared, even at a net worth advantage. Maneski now only holding a 2,000 net worth advantage. Oh, that feels so bad considering they're up by nearly 12k at one point. Yeah. You cannot afford to make mistakes like that against a team of this caliber. You will get punished. Let's talk about the late game right now because is there the pressure for Maneski to play that flawless game and end it? against Team Secret, it, it's weird, right? Because we've got, on one side, we've got a Visage, not gonna scale great. On the other side, Tidehunter, Meepo, Yaps, or Rubik. I sort of feel like Maneski will win this late game just because okay. Meepo can never get BKB. Yeah. There will be a sheer amount of stuns for him that I think it's hard for him to come back through. Uh, plus, Wraith King BKB is gonna be so strong. Well, let's not forget all the Aghanim Scepter he can hand down. There's uh, some sick Aghanim Scepters in this game. Yeah, all four of them are great to give out to his team. Yeah. They are going to be able to get the force tap telekinesis on to Rage of Potato, who just wanted to be able to grab the haste rune and get away. But the fast move some from Secret punishes him. And now this is Secret. Been such a value, map. Aegis. Sorry. Losing it in that fight, whatever. They got so much map control. They continue to get map control. They're starting to make plays around the map. Don't poke the bear cap. So in turn, it's Secret. They need to be the ones to show that they can play flawless. They won't fall into the same trap that Maneski did. They do have the pressure on them to take objectives. They're going to be able to take that tier two mid. And looks like heading up to top as well, where one of mid one's Meepos is already pushing that in. Maneski respond playing the other side of the map, not wanting to challenge Secret for team fights right now. But need to find space open territory for their alchemist and wraith king to farm and it's secret that continue to play really aggressively they're gonna take this tier two tower up at top for free looks like mineski want to go for a trade and take the bottom one but i think secret defend this tower it's yeah. way too healthy for them not to and moon's gonna get lifted to start Yapsor knows that he has the lead to be able to get away if Maneski tries to catch him. And instead, it's going to be Moon who's caught with a chemical rage down. He's going to turn and fight. Mid one needs to be careful of his meepos, though. Is he going to be able to get one of them out? He's stunned up the incivil concoction. Good ethereal play. But now, tries to jump away, but there's too many stunts. Now, the cast, it bounces back once again and again and again and again. He dies. And Tidehunter is going to fall inside that puppy. Tries in vain just to get out a good freezing field to bring down these heroes. But Maneski, they're too damn strong. They've already brought down the cores, and they know the supports are food. And so are the objective and they're right in front of the base with the creep wave tide's gonna buy back they don't have the buyback on the meepo that's even more important and this alchemist with ac is gonna take your base so quickly with no ravage with no meepo how can secrets possibly stop this push zai tries to slow down with an anchor smash hoping that he's gonna lure maneski into diving the base Maneski, maybe gonna play a bit scared. No, Nico, baby, he wants to be able to fight a kill. Bring air blast into the air, it doesn't land. Had to throw it around the birds there. And as a result, just a slight sidestep, was able to get out of the trajectory of that arrow. But Maneski, gonna be up one lane of barracks they here. Should go mid. 35 seconds, they're probably realizing, hey, mid one cannot have buyback. Otherwise, he would have blown it already. Let's keep it going. The solar crash trying to slow him down alongside the anchor smash. The physical damage definitely being hampered here. Uh oh, Rinky. He's gonna lose his reincarnation for free. Not sure if it matters though. As Maneski. They should back out. They're gonna back up. You say it. And they do it. No chemical rage, no Wraith King ultimate. You still had 15 seconds, but I don't think it's worth it at that point. Yeah. You can still get shrines, you can still reset. Learn from Navi's mistake. Yeah. Do not <laughs> yeah. overstay your welcome. Yes. Maneski. We're gifted a comeback opportunity. Don't make it's the Navi. same exact mistake. Don't go for the throne. Just secure one lane of barracks. 
get maybe another objective, take shrines out, but control the map from there. And I feel like that's what a lot of the meta has been about this year, is been breaking the enemy, so at some point you're stronger than them and they know it and then just trying to control the map as best as possible and for a lineup that has an alchemist and, and a rape king with midas they're gonna benefit from that control slowly extend your lead maneski this uh this fifth pick alk secret thought they had the answer with this meeple they looked excited but mid one are they gonna make this mistake though that they leave the alchemist alone a bit too long the moonlight shadow goes out do they know do they know he's gonna pop the bkb and couple great and secret look oh shit we gotta get out of here zai he's gonna be slowed down by the unstable concoction pop for a moment defensive force now is gonna be able to get him away look at nisha defending himself against that moonlight shadow but he's gonna be yule scepter at the same time it looks like nisha's probably gonna fall but moon if they trade this out it's gonna be well worth for secret he's gonna be able to get off another round of unstable concoction do they have any more disabled fight that maybe they can't win but they feel confident about they're gonna go with the watermelon first great potato controlled up immediately you'll accept their four staff onto the high ground so i'm gonna be able to get away yeah sure they get on the hill keep protecting secret they're gonna be able to get more four staffs out but they need that one meeple be able to get away that's why the familiars drop 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 trying to get him out but he doesn't make it the poop is not on time secret fall losing their meeple activate the shrine but on full retreat now as they know maneski they're gonna be able to clean up whatever they can get their hands on that's gonna be the captain of Secret puppy will fall. Zai shows up trying to slow him down. A four staff to help him get away and a TP out. Spots him. Great fire blast. That'll catch him. Even as the arrow slows down the damage, puppy can do little with this kind of respite. Nico baby not going to lose his reincarnation either. And they know that uh, the Meepo doesn't have buyback. They just saw him buy the hex. He can't possibly have the gold for it. And this could just be mega creeps right now. This could be mega's Mineski. They see their opportunity. They say you last pick me, Boaz. It doesn't matter. We've got an alchemist. We've got Moon on our side. Arrow comes out with perfectly fine with the telekinesis. They're going to be able to bring down their reincarnation. The first life gone of the Rain King, but Moon beating up the tier three, finishing off the familiars as well. Secret just trying to slow him down, but Moon, he only has one thing on his mind, and that's objective. But with 12 seconds left for the Meepo, Maneski are going to play it safe and disciplined once again. And they're going to reset themselves off of the shrine, get control of this area. They still have to be careful because Moon did use his buyback there. That leaves Secret some opening. Meepo does take the base very fast, but mid one has just not had a good game. 7-7-7. Seven, seven, and seven. You're the last pick. I heard some of the other analysts talk about this. They say mid one's had a, a quiet tournament. Would you agree with that? I think in the late, in the group stage, he was fantastic, but on the main stage so far, it's not the uh, mid one that we've seen throughout the year. They need him to play like the superstar he is, but... Team Secret smoking up. And they gave him the perfect situation. They gave him the last pick. This yeah. was the hero that he wanted, the last overall pick. They're going to walk into the high ground here. They've got to be careful. They've Radiant got the high ground advantage. They're going to be able to jump on the Yapsor almost immediately, but of course, that immediately comes out. They're going to be able to cut it with the frostbite for the Meepo. He's in trouble with the Untable Concoction. They're going to be able to break down mid one and look at Moon go. He is tearing through Secret. They are falling apart now. The Ravage used defensively, but it won't matter. He falls. 90 seconds for him, 60 seconds for the core. And now Nisha's going to die as well. He does manage to finish up the Wraith King's first life, but he's got another. Guess who's back? Nico, baby. Helps Moon get the triple kill. And there's only the buyback out from the Visage. And this game might just be done. 50 seconds with the Meepo, even if you use buyback at this point. They've lost so much. They're pushing in all the lanes right now, and the team fights, they just get harder and harder with this Meepo. Yep. At this point in the game, you're supposed to be so many different items ahead of everybody. You're pressuring all three lanes at once. No one can exit the map. But this hero, the biggest weakness of it, you can't get BKB. Yeah. Minnesi. All of these stuns add up. This is crazy. The utmost respect for them because they did blow the buyback on Moon. They want to make sure they get Roshan first. So they're still going to be able to assault the base while Zai is dead. They know he doesn't have buyback, but they're not trying to rush things too much. They're going to pick up the Aegis and Cheese, get that second line for the out, and then try and go for the Mega. This feels like a veteran team. Yeah, I feel like a lot of teams are just trying to rush things. But the best mark of a team that's getting better throughout the tournament is learning from other people's mistakes. Navi rushed that game subsequently, they're out of the tournament. Just because you're ahead of Secret, they made that move at bottom. I think that kind of shook them and said, we're not out of the woods yet. We haven't won this game. You can't act like it either. So they make the smart play. 
the safe play, they reset themselves, they go for the Roshan, and now you take the Rax with so many lives up. There is just 12 seconds. Nico Baby's gonna try and strike while the Tide Hunter's still dead, but no arrow follow up. Good four stats from Secret, but still, Maneski, how do you stop this Juggernaut? How do you stop this Alchemist? Moon and Nico Baby beating down the top lane of Barracks. Mid lane is completely exposed as well. You've gotta take seven lives. Moon's got an Aegis. Nico Baby has his own built in one. You've got the cheese, you've got everything that oh, uh, Omni Knight provides you with the Guardian's Angel and the purifications. I mean, this head in the graced alchemist, don't forget, it gives you 28 bonus strength. That's just damage that he's going to throw into these buildings. And there it goes. Look at him just so impressed. Focusing on the melee barracks, the rest of the seeker looking for anybody to be able to go to. But who, but who takes that opportunity to turn and finish off Nisha? Instant five back. Puppy in trouble. The Maladie is going to take him out inside. He may be in trouble as well, but Nico Baby doesn't want to extend himself. He knows Magus is the focus. Moon looking to be able to finish off that range rack. He should be able to get this type of ice goes up. Defensive four step. Moon going back in with a BKB trying to get this meeple. Unstable concoction locking him all down. Focusing the one with Soul Hero. Four step does manage to get him away from the arrow. Down with the other meeple. That's going to finish him off. A five back coming out from Secret. Now they have to hold prey that Maneski will feed their lives away off of the greater good, but no, it's going to be the arrow coming out on Anisha. Controlled up. Great paralyzed the cast. Nico Baby trying to finish him off. That's going to be his first life. Second life coming up for him and the Alchemist. Unstable concoction. Ready to go. On the meeples. Controlling them up. KP protecting him with the heavenly grace. And looking at him just beating down those four little dwarves. They're going to die soon. Moon. He may also fall though. His mid to survive. The star star not quite enough. The scythe on the out. He's actually going to live through this. Nico Baby. He's controlled up as well. Make one. Survives through it all, Maneski. They die, and they don't have buyback on the Alchemist. They have buyback on everybody else. This is your only moment, I feel like, for Secret. There's no buyback on the Alc, but is a hundred seconds enough time to do it? They make the miracle hold, but it costs them all of their racks. Meepo, probably one of the best heroes to do it, just because he can deal with the other lanes simultaneously. He's got life steal, and I think Secret are well aware of the position. They're up as five. There's no out buyback. They've got a window of 80 seconds. Once you take down this 2-3 tower, you have to go for the throw. You are not trying to trade racks here. This has been the international with the most comebacks. On the buyback from, from Nico, Greece. baby. An opportunity has been opened up for Secret. They don't have Ravage. But all it takes is one fight. The tier three, Secret. And there's no glitch either. Move to the tier fours, holding on to the buybacks. So they're gonna try and make sure the Rage of Potato as well. Pete, hey Pete can still buy back. Nico, baby, he's gonna make his jump forward. He does have those extra lives, but he's probably gonna need it for the Omni He dies so fast. And sure enough, KP buys back with just five seconds left in the club. Can he get there in time? Can he actually save Nico, baby? He's gonna pop his BKB. Rage of Potato going forward. Instantly gets controlled up, but does have the old scepter another leap away. They're trying to finish him off. Heels coming out. KP can't provide enough. Go the Ethereum play, finish him off. Now, they've got another buyback. See, they've been doing this. Four is actually gonna fall. Yeah, Secret has they, 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 they do have the Malachi with the Deathly coming out from them. They might be able to chop down this one as fast as fast as they go back. They're trying to go for it. They jump in. 